Hello guys, welcome to your 20th lesson in this Vue.js course. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at working with dynamic routes and params in Vue.js. Let's dive right in. All right, so we're back inside of the app. And the first thing I want to note is if you ever get this warning, TypeScript IntelliSense is disabled on template, configure JSX preserve in compiler option, options. So basically what you have to do is if you're making use of javascript or typescript uh, for javascript you look for jsconfig.json and for typescript you look for tsconfig and basically what i want to do is i'm going to add this particular property and say jsx and i'm going to use preserve right here and once we save that the warning should disappear and try making sure you use lang equals to html yeah and that is that since we've gotten that out of the way let's move on now what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly create another view right here and the view is basically going to have something it's going to be recipes so recipe view dot view okay and what I'm going to do is view in it and this is going to be HTML. All right. So we have this right here. And what basically what I want to do is I want to have data. Okay. So the data property is going to return. Is basically going to return recipes. And the recipes is going to be an array of objects. So we are going to have three objects the first thing is going to be id okay so i'm going to say id is one and the name is going to be equal to let's say fried rice and basically the next um thing okay let's just use the name and id and i'm going to duplicate these and for these we are going to have two this is going to be spag etsy and this is going to be chicken and chips okay so this is going to have an id of three all right so we're going to have this right here and let's actually make that um render inside of our router here so how do we display dynamic route but before we do that let's first render this particular route that we have so this is going to be forward slash recipes now the name is going to be recipes obviously and this is going to be recipes view so let's save that and basically what i want to do right here is i'm going to have a div now inside of that if we are going to use for loop okay the for uh fever directive and in recipes and basically what we want to do right here is we want this to be item dot so this is going to be item dot id no item dot name so let's save that and let's come to our app dot view and we are going to add a new link Okay, so this is going to be to recipes, uh, which is the same name we made use here. So let's save that and let's see what we have. All right, and let's see, is that automatically refreshing? Nope, but let's do that manually and let's see. Okay, we are having to contact here, even though one is for recipes. So let's correct that right here. This should be recipes and let's save that and let's see what we have so we have home working about contact and then the recipes okay so we can see all everything is being displayed right this works and these links also work well so if i should come right here okay we can see our contact and our recipes now how about we actually make the recipes go to a recipe detail page we're in we make this as a kind of link and whenever we click on this it shows us that okay 
this page is about maybe fried rice or this page is about spaghetti or this is about chicken and chips and this is where the route parameters comes in now you might have gone to a particular uh, maybe you are a particular website and you have something such as maybe okay let's assume it's an e-commerce website you have products and then you have maybe forward slash it could be um the product name let's say for example you have something such as pasta or you have something such as um shoes or nike shoes uh -huh. so you see that essentially the each of these are actually could be dynamic these are basically route parameters and depending on the route parameter the website the page would render something else something entirely different and this is basically what we want to do the concept we are actually following so if i should come right here and i come to this recipe app i instead of this being a div i actually want this to be um, a link and i'm going to add a class this time we don't have to win css so we are basically going to write a bit of just minute css and i'm going to give it a class of um routes link okay or let's give it something of or of something better more of like recipe and for this i'm going to give it rest class of recipe container and below right here i'm going to this is going to be css and let's just write a bit of style so for this i'm going to copy this class and we're just going to write just simple css and the okay i'm going to have play of flex and i'm going to have a gap of 10 pixels and i'm going to have flex direction this is going to be column and for the recipes i'm just going to have okay um for the recipe i'm going to have dot recipe and this is essentially going to have something such as background color background color of red and text color is going to be white and this is essentially going to have a padding of 20 pixels and if i should save that and we should come right here we should see some changes okay let's inspect these and let's see if there is any issues and find out why this is not actually applying okay we have the dot recipe and then we have the recipe okay this particular style is getting applied and let me remove that and and let's save that again we should see it being reflected all right so we have this working now essentially i want to actually have an href here so we should have an href which is going to be equal to something like forward slash recipes uh forward slash recipe slash okay let's say fried rice so we essentially want to have something like this and if you should look here okay we are having this everything is actually static now a way to make that dynamic is i could for example um have another column right here and i say link or rather something such as log and this is going to be something for this i'm going to have fried rice and for this i'm going to have spag and essentially for this i'm going to have chicken and chips so let's see and let's use data binding so essentially what i'm going to do is i'm going to bind this and right here inside of this i'm going to have my templates um, by back text so that i'll be able to use template tags and i'm going to say forward slash recipes and then forward slash then we're going to use this dynamic value and we're essentially going to say item dot slug so let's save that and by the time we come here we should see this okay 
let's inspect and let's be see the html so this goes to slash four slash recipes four slash fried rice and for this four slash recipes four uh, slash spark and so on so these links are actually dynamic but what if we click on this okay this is going to not load anything because we don't have that particular view existing so i'm going to come back to our recipes and what i'm basically going to do is create a view specially for that so right here in my slc i'm going to come here and click on recipe detail view dot view so we're going to create a new a, a new view new view file and i'm going to essentially generate this html and essentially what i want to do is recipe detail page and let's save that and let's come right here to this our router so what we essentially do is i'm going to duplicate this let's duplicate this and what we essentially do is right here we're going to inside of the parts we're going to have four slash recipes forward slash now this is going to start with a column now it could be id you could name it id you could name it slog you could name it um whatever it is you actually want to name it you could name it anything like that so this is recipes this is uh four slash recipe four slash column and i'm going to just put this as slug since we are making use of slug and this is the name is going to be recipe detail and this here is going to be recipe detail dot view now another thing is whenever we're making use we are uh, making use of dynamic routing remember we shouldn't make use of this a tag so i'm essentially going to make use of the router link so router link and this is not going to work well what we are going to do is we are going to use this two and we are going to bind it and it's going to be equal to now we're going to have an object the name is going to be recipe detail same name that we have here so let me just copy that and paste it here and the second agreement is going to be params we are going to pass in params and that is going to be the parameter that okay we want to add the page is this particular part is accepting and we can see right here under the part we have this slug here this is the dynamic value this is the dynamic parameter that we want to pass in so we are going to have something such as slug and the slug is going to be item okay so we're going to have item dot slug and let's save that but we are having some errors right here and i think let's check our router configuration okay this should be recipe detail so let's save that and that should essentially resolve it and i'm going to come here and refresh okay it says here compiler error element is missing end tag all right so let's come here and let's see okay we should have this here yes and that should fix up our errors and we still have two additional errors i think uh -huh, that should fix that and let's save and let's come right here okay so that's refresh by the time we come here to this fried rice recipe okay we can see it loads the recipe detail page come back to recipes for spaghetti it loads this and come back to recipes for chicken and chips we can see it loads this fine and how about we actually come to the recipe detail page and we have something that is a bit dynamic so i could say something like this okay recipe detail page for and right here inside of my string interpolation i'm going to do something like uh router dot params dot slog so let's save that and let's come here okay let's refresh all right for some reason that is not coming out okay and i think oh that's because i made a stupid um unprecedented mistake and this should be route.params.slog so let's come here and let's refresh this 
and we can see recipe detail page for chicken and chips if i should come here for fried rice okay if i should come here for spaghetti see and that works fine and another thing is you could decide to have it right here stored in the data and we can say data and right here i'm going to return return then slug is going to be so whenever you want to access the route object which is given us automatically by the view router you may do something such as these dots then your dollar sign routes dot params dot slug so if i should come here and should replace this with just slug this should still work the same way let's come back here and let's see recipes for spark now fried rice and spaghetti and chicken and chips all right let's come back to the our quotes here and another thing right here inside of this recipe detail view you could do is instead of accessing these manually one thing you can do is you can accept it as a prop so i'm going to just remove this and let's remove this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say props and i'm going to accept slug now to make sure that this works well this works fine you have to come right here and you're going to pass in another parameter right here which is going to be props and you're going to say true okay that is shouldn't be here so i'm going to cut and paste here so props is true and let's come back here and let's see uh this is not working okay now it works back to recipes come back here and this works now this is a, a perfect place or a good place to actually maybe do something such as an api um, request or some other thing to call maybe if you have the data static uh, static uh, maybe in a particular state to actually filter it out and render but we are not doing that yet i'm just showing you okay some of the things that you could do with the view router